Lastly, let's see what happens if we play the game thousands of times. And for each of these runs of the game, we'll record how long it took for the players to actually finish the game. So essentially, we are recording the number of shots fired. So in the game class, I'm going to introduce this new variable, which I'll call n shots, the number of shots, and we'll initialize that to zero. Now, why is it important to count the number of shots? Well, if the players are playing somewhat smart, then we would expect this number to be, I mean, not arbitrarily low, but it would be somewhat, you know, somewhat low, because if they are playing smart, they don't have to guess every single index across the entire board. And if they are playing randomly, this number will be pretty high because it should take them a very long time on average across many, many games to find that last patrol boat. So in the game class, in the make move function, I'm now just adding this, you know, add to the number of shots fired. And here we'll just say self dot end shots. So after the end of, after a move has been made, we'll just say plus equal one add to the number of shots fired. I think that should do the trick. Okay, so let's go and create a new script. Um, you know what, I'm going to call it tournament.py. Okay, now this script has been created. And let's, well, what are we going to put into there? Well, we'll first import um, our engine. So from engine import game, let's run this, this works, nice. And then we'll say um, how many games we would like to run. So let's set this to 1000. So we will have 1000 games and we'll record the number of shots in each game. And then we'll say for i in range and games, we'll set up the game. So game is equal to an instance of the game class with human one equal to false. We don't want to play a thousand games. We want the computer to play a thousand games against itself. And we'll then simply say while not game over. So it's kind of like what we have in our GUI. So if we go back over here, I mean, there is this while loop and, and this whole idea of at some point, um, you know, the computer making moves. But now it's a lot shorter because we don't have to take care of any of the visual animation. We're just having the engine run in the background. So if, well, while not game over, if game dot player one turn, for now, we'll just set this to the game.randomAI. And otherwise, we'll also have game.randomAI. And then when the game is over, that's when this while loop will terminate. We'll then say the number of shots, we'll append to that, the number of shots that, you know, it took for this game to finish. And you know what, what we could also do, we could simply say and one is equal to zero and n2 is equal to zero. So these will be two variables counting the number of wins by player one. You know what? Number of wins one, number of wins two. And then down here, after we counted the number of shots, uh, we'll say if game dot result is equal to one, well, n1, uh, not n1, number of wins, this is what I just changed it to, plus equal one, well, here, you know, it can only be two, but let's just say game that elif, else if game that result is equal to two. We could have just used an else, but anyway, number of wins two plus equal one. Okay, um, let's, let's set this to 100 for now. 100, this shouldn't take as long. Okay, 220 milliseconds. That was very quick. I'm going to print the results. So print uh, number of shots, print n1 print n2. Let's run this and ah geez I wrote n1 and n2 again where it should be n wins 1 and n wins 2 and yeah this is looking pretty good. So uh, this first list of numbers here of integers that's the number of shots it took and you can see that just by eyeballing this it was somewhere around 180 and maybe even above that so it took us 180 shots to finish the game on average. Now, is that a good or a bad number? There are 10 by 10 many cells on each board. So there's two players. This means that at most there can be 200 shots. If 
both are playing well 199 because by then one of the players will have finished the game so 199 is the worst that it can be and if we open up the GUI I mean what is the best possible result the best possible result is player one firing five shots onto the aircraft carrier of player two then another four and then two times three that's 15 16 17 so the numbers the number of shots will range between 17 and 199 and let's go back to the tournament and run this again so the random ais are pretty pretty much towards the upper limit i mean we can see there are games with 199 shots that's the worst game ever and right down here there's another one and another one down there 198 so you're seeing random is really 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 bad and what we can also see we can see that in 58 of the games player one has won and in 42 games player two has won so let's increase this to 1000 and see whether that holds up that player one has the advantage so let's run this now this is going to take a little bit longer 1.8 seconds and if we optimized our code this would be even faster but i think 1.8 seconds for a thousand games is all we need and we can see that now in 533 cases player one has won the game and in only 467 cases player two has won the game so let's set this to 5000 this should now take six to seven seconds if my math is correct uh, of course there's some luck involved in terms of how lucky the two players are but now 7.8 seconds and again there is a bit of a difference a, diff, a bit of a bias towards player one so moving first gives you a first mover advantage so that's not too unsurprising and we can still see that the numbers are super high but what if we um you know had a bit of code to visualize this so let's let's visualize this so from matplotlib We'll import the good old pyplot function, which is, you know, just the go-to standard in Python for making a, 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 a quick plot. And then, um, well, we'll let's just make a bar plot. So we'll, we won't print this, but we'll make a little bar plot and we'll just um, have to record the counts of, so the values of the different bars. I'm going to just call it values. And here for I in range, well, since the best possible game is 17 moves and the worst is 200, let's just, you know, have a range from 17 to 200. And we'll say values dot append uh, the number of shots. And we'll count how often this particular I occurred. So we are counting how many games ended after 17 moves, how many ended after 18 moves, all the way until 199. And then we have just a record of how often, how frequent, how likely each of these moves is to appear, okay? Not this move, but this number of shots, this number of moves um, for the game to take. And then we'll say um, pyplot.bar, we are making a bar plot. Here we have the range from 17 to 200, so that's the x axis, and then the y axis will be the value, so that's how tall the different bars are and lastly well pyplot.show otherwise we won't see the graph um 1000 let's run this we have to wait and there we go so this is the result again 582 wins by player one 418 by player two and we can see that in most instances so maybe 185 ish which is what we saw before from eyeballing it we can see that the games take really really long we we are anything but close to 17 shots now let's see if that graph changes if one of the players plays as the basic ai that we created so let's close this go back into here and let's set player one to the basic AI and let's run this again. And there we go. Now the first observation, <laughs> and that's, that's just, you know, I mean, player one won every single game, 1000 to zero random AI, no chance at all. And the second thing, uh, we moved from almost 200 moves or like let's say 185 moves per game to somewhere a lot closer to say 95 so 
the basic AI really pushed everything from over here to the left and it dramatically reduced the number of shots necessary to finish the game. Let's see what happens if both players play with the actual AI, the basic AI. Let's run this. Let's wait. And now I think the results should be a lot more even, 513 to 587. And at least in this instance here, we pushed it maybe further a little bit, but of course it's still close to 100 because after all, you have to resort to the checkerboard pattern at some point to find that um, small ship of size two. And then you might have to guess almost every other um, square. And that is still almost 100 guesses, okay? For both of the players, okay? because one of the players now only has to make 50 instead of the random AI, which went for 100. But this is why we almost halved um, the number of shots. And I think, yeah, this is enough of a proof of concept for me at this point. The basic AI is behaving as it should. The results really support that claim. And yeah, we can see that the basic AI can absolutely dominate a random AI. And we also see that the result that we get after thousands of games really supports our idea of, you know, how the AI should work out and how the games should develop given what we have coded. So thank you very much for watching the series. I hope you had a lot of fun and maybe you'll play around with the GUI a bit more. You'll add, you know, new features. You might have, you know, better animations of tiny little ships instead of just, you know, these green rectangles you might have you might add something like noise to that so every time that you hit water there's like a splash like a splash noise and every time you score a hit um, there's something like you know a, a a little explosion sound something like that so that would be very cool for the GUI and in terms of the engine I mean you could just make for a more efficient engine so instead of a lot of these you know for I in, for you in, all of these um, lists that we are looping through, you might speed that up a little. And then lastly, you could come up with even better AIs. I'm, I'm, I, I deliberately called this basic AI, even though it already captures how most humans would play the game, but I think there might be even better approaches to, you know, how to play Battleship. And yeah, that's, that's up to you. That's for you to explore. And yeah, see you in another coding project.